very good day to all of you and uh, I welcome all the audience and participants who have joined us today to listen to this lecture which proves to be very interesting. I have been reading a little about this and uh, we will be hearing a lot about this from Dr. Sanjay Kumar Manjul, Joint Director General of ASI. Uh, we have been hearing about this topic for quite some time now. It has been in the newspapers and it has been uh, in discussion in news channels. Uh, there was also an OTT series recently on this topic. What happened during historical times has been recorded in history and it is easy to understand what happened in those times. But what happened in prehistoric times uh, is a little difficult. We will have to rely on a lot of supplementary evidences coming from the fields of archaeology, anthropology and these days even uh, you know, DNA studies and lot of interpretation to give us some idea about what happened in prehistoric times. For long there has been a division between two groups of people, some who think that the original inhabitants of India were the Harappan uh, civilization people and later a group of people came from Central Asia, a people with a different culture and <clears throat> when they came in, the original inhabitants of India migrated down towards the south and there are many scholars who you know cite many evidences uh, in favor of this theory. There is another group which says that this did not actually happen that way and uh, both coexisted in nearby regions at one time and then there was an intermingling between the populations and this has been going on for quite some time and the people who believe that uh, the original inhabitants, the Harappans were driven down to South India or they had to migrate to South India because of the advent of uh, what are called Aryans from Central Asia. They cite a lot of evidences uh, like the absence of uh, maybe chariots or absence of horses or certain kinds of foods. Uh, there are many, uh, I mean, the uh, language differences. The language of the Harappans is yet to be, uh, you know, comprehensively deciphered. It has not been done as yet completely to the satisfaction of all. Uh, whereas the language of the Vedic civilization people who are supposed to have come later uh, is known. There are many such evidences. Uh, which are cited by both groups of people and as of now we are not very sure what happened and that is what we are going to hear first hand from Dr. Sanjay Kumar Manjul who is the Joint Director General of Archaeological Survey of India and uh, he is in fact the archaeologist uh, who excavated at Sinauli and came up with some very interesting finds about which he will himself be talking to us today. Uh, so without taking much of uh, your time, uh, for a brief introduction of today's speaker, uh, may I request uh, Shri Rakesh Tripathi, Education Officer, National Science Centre, to introduce Dr. Manju. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, Dr. Sanjay Manjul basically is working as a capacity of Joint Director General in Archaeological Survey of India 
is a basically well known archaeologist of the country and as i said the ott ott platform there is one series secrets of sinoli in which the first war carriage basically discovered under the ground basically in india and the age it is considered approximately 2000 years bce so dr manjul was basically supervising that work uh, he will basically taking all these in detail in this lecture uh, out uh, out of this sinoli project basically he worked in a harappar bijnor rajasthan excavation barnala excavation and he published more than 20 research papers one book and he is the basically expert member of various universities also some of them are dakkan college national museum institute mm-hmm. university of calcutta magadh university kurukshetra university and the nagpur university he is a very very good scholar and he has he has a good sense of excavation basically and if i say ki the planning of excavation in sinoli because of dr manjul we will find these kind of uh, artifacts and the burial their burial sites because of the there are two type of uh, basically the uh, excavation horizontal and vertical first they started horizontal uh, excavation and after that manjul sir de- uh, decided after some time to basically go for a vertical excavation and i think if i am not wrong that the records of this excavation we will conserve many uh, precious artifacts there the pottery and all of you are familiar with the chariot and some other artifacts so dr manjul is there he will basically share his experience of excavation and he will basically enlighten the importance of these kind of discovery and why they are important for us so over to dr manjul sir uh <clears throat> thank you very much uh for uh so kindness and i am thankful to science center for giving me the opportunity to speak among scholars and the general mass or particularly the science background uh students and all scholars i really feel privileged to uh, talk uh today's as uh, subject in fact uh yes i am going to present uh, in the powerpoint uh, presentation about my experience and discovery of uh, at sonoli excavation uh, by and large uh, before that i would like to share with particularly the students uh, who is uh, listening this lecture archaeology is not a core science but it's a amalgamation of art history and various sciences like paleobotany paleogeology uh, earth science uh, environment uh, etc uh, uh, so on the several sciences contributed for understanding of culture uh, uh, related to the human kind uh, that include in archaeological discipline so that is the reason it's a really important to understand uh, archaeology not only the history archaeology not only the reconstruction of uh, our culture but it's also very very important for understand uh, the technological part and uh, the science part included in that particular culture uh, at uh, that point of time so i i feel really privileged uh, to uh, discuss and talk to uh, all uh, viewers and listeners today uh, i am sharing my powerpoint presentation uh, Mm-hmm. 
I think uh, my uh, PowerPoint presentation is visible to all. Yes. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. Okay. Yes, Thank sir. you. Uh, uh, yes. The the today's title is first war chariot discovered in the excavation at Sonoli. The Sonoli excavation is uh, why Sonoli excavation is the landmark. Why Sonoli excavation is uh, too popular in this time. Why Sonoli excavation said to be the discovery of the century? So, uh, because of its unique finding in the excavation. So, uh, I can just list out some uh, unique finding which is discovered for the first time uh, in Indian subcontinent. That is war chariots. We have discovered three chariots which is, uh, I can call, this is war chariot, in fact. Uh, another uh, important uh, object is copper decorated shields. This is also very important because a shield shows that this, these chariot is not only for the procession and uh, also, but it's uh, related to the uh, war because defensive uh, weapons is also uh, put in this uh, graveyard. Another important thing is whip. Whip is also related with the chariot and the torch. Torch, uh, we can call mashal. Mashal is also a very, very important part of entire warfare or the troops. Another important thing is antenna swords. One antenna sword among them having the intact hilt. That's the also a landmark discovery which uh, uh, created or uh, which given us for understanding of the antenna swords recovered in many places in Ganga Valley, Gang Upper Ganga Yamuna Dwap, and other places also. Another important finding is bow. Impression of bow is also recovered in one of the grave and copper helmet. Copper, this entire composition of uh, shows that the, these people uh, involved in the warfare, or so this is really a very, very important discovery for the first time in any of the place of Indian subcontinent. One, this is the overview of the excavation. You can see uh, the 10 pits, 10 different pits having different uh, burial uh, in each pit. Uh, so uh, this is the entire uh, top view. And some of the structure you can see, this is, uh, 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 I try to understand this uh, structure. It's possibly the sacred chamber. I can explain in uh, another slide uh, about this. Total five coffin burial as well as uh, the uh, secondary burial and also the symbolic burial. Among them, five burial is coffin burial. The rest of the burial is not in the coffin. You can see the overview of one of the burial. Uh, we uh, numbered it, it uh, burial number three. In center, you can uh, in center you can see this is the coffin. Uh, it's a coffin, but uh, little different coffin, like uh, a general cot uh, in present time. The four leg cot uh, having uh, the box at the top. So uh, you can see this is the shield. It's a look like a torso, an eight shaped shield having a lot of decoration at the top. And this is uh, the torch, mashal, having copper uh, seating all around. And this is antenna sword. This is helmet. And uh, th this two wheel, beneath that, the pole of the chariot is also there in uh, beneath this uh, these objects so the and you can see the cluster of pot 
uh, every pot possibly having some food grains or liquid or uh, something offered to the last uh, uh, dead, uh, uh, dead person uh, for offering uh, of uh, the food grains or uh, the cooked food uh, maybe you see the detail of the chariot uh, chariot wheel this is one of the wheel you can see the inner side of the wheel are uh, having the triangular uh, inlay design of copper in the wood the wooden wheel having the copper inlay design in three row is it's a look like a radiated sun if this wheel is rotating uh, the sunlight reflects it's a, like a, a sun very uh, glittering uh, chariot the another uh, this is the decoration over the shield at shape c this is coffin after removing the shield etc you can see the pole and yoke also of the chariot the pole also having the triangular inlay design in all over the body of the pole the rounded pole so that's the beauty of the chariot and the master craftsmanship of uh, uh, the people uh, residing there or uh, the creator see uh, this is the uh, antenna sword see the hilt earlier this uh, antenna sword only you can see this uh, pommel or uh, v-shape antenna of uh, uh, this shield this is the additional hilt is uh, tied with this this is wooden hilt over <coughs> it uh, the spiral of copper spiral uh, wrapped all around the hilt this will give the very good uh, uh, handle to hold uh, the sword uh, so this is the a copper channel and this is ant another antenna sword or this is <coughs> antenna sword with hilt see the another burial if you see this is uh, the decomposed impression of uh, bow and we got the bone points here four bo bone points uh, uh, bone point is basically the arrowheads so bow and arrow uh, putting in this grave is also a very very <coughs> important discovery uh, of this uh, 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 excavation at sanoli you can see the burial number 9 the uh, arrangement of pot just close to uh, the skeleton this is a skeleton uh, full skeleton uh, within the coffin and below the coffin there is uh, pots copper pot and fiance pot is also that's <coughs> another technical uh, technological advancement and craftsmanship you can see uh, in the pot uh, particularly the metal pot as well as the fiance uh, pot and uh, yes earthen pot is also there uh, having uh, one of the pot we got some food grains also in this uh, excavation uh, see the reconstruction of the um, bow and arrow uh, like this another uh, trench uh, burial number 9 and burial number 10 are uh, very similar but this structure brick structure is very very important for understanding of the whole burial process what they have done possibly this chamber is used for uh, the rituals with the la, uh, dead body so they put possibly the inside the dead body and for the cleaning wrapping of cloth or uh, etc in this chamber itself and after that uh, they buried the entire thing in the uh, with the coffin uh, here at the close wide uh, area so this is the arrangement of uh, the whole burial pit burial pit includes many things uh, the woman burial includes also weapons some weapons but in the different style of weapons and also if you see the coffin having very very intricate 
carving and inlay designing in the entire structure of the coffin that's a very very amazing uh, craftsmanship you can uh, see in the uh, these uh, coffins uh, we have recovered uh, during the excavation see in 2005 6 uh, excavation were uh, done by excavation branch uh, asi and uh, recovered 116 burial there and that burials are also a very very similar type and you can see one of the um, uh, shield another shield is also here or uh, having the inlay design and this has copper designing at the top and this, uh, one of the burial the gold bangles solid gold uh, bangles uh, uh, recovered in one of the burial and this is necklace with the gold and copper and semi precious stone beads uh, also having one of the necklace uh, composing semi precious bead like carnelian and agate also uh, this is very very rich burial uh, found in 2005 uh, 6 by the excavator uh, now come to the chariot because chariot is so important uh, finding uh, to actually the change the entire scenario of historical perspective the question mark uh, the migration or uh, rn invasion uh, even uh, the technological advancement uh, of uh, the land and the people so chariot is really really very very important finding of this excavation chariot composes uh, almost all components uh, of chariot uh, you can see the actual finding of the chariot this is one of the uh, wheel uh, see the wheel the central hub is uh, also uh, here and one nail uh, for stopping or uh, for the movement of the wheel or uh, helping the uh, for tie the middle uh, chassis of the entire uh, uh, chariot you can see the uh, chassis also having the wooden chassis but the copper seating uh, uh, of the all wooden component uh, is there you can see this is uh, the chassis uh, this is dice board uh, a frontal dice board and also uh, uh, this uh, uh, platform uh, for uh, carrying uh, the warrior or the human being this is also a uh, copper uh, pipe uh, for the frame or for, for the support of the uh, dice board so uh, we what we have done we have done a small part uh, for city scan and we got the impression of design decomposed design in this uh, dice board that's uh, 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 given us the very, very idea of intricate carving in this uh, uh, dice board at the top. See, the another view, frontal view. This is uh, two chariot back to back. One chariot is this, another chariot is this. One wheel, uh, another wheel, and one wheel here, another wheel is here. And then uh, this is uh, the part of the chassis and also uh, connecting uh, the pole. This is another uh, connecting for the pole. This is uh, the chassis having the copper seating, but this area, uh, there is no copper seating at all. So that is the reason everything is, uh, uh, everything was decomposed, fully decomposed, nothing have been uh, uh, traceable at this moment so uh, but we have uh, this entire JC for reconstruction of the entire chariot you can see the another view of uh, see the wheel intricate carving of the wheel uh, uh, three row of uh, 
uh, this copper inlay in the entire wood and see how they have tied the hole or uh, uh, for the staff uh, of uh, for the flag or we can say for for the support of uh, dice board this is another top view you can see the uh, entire uh, composition or entire uh, structure of the chassis or uh, of the chariot see the whole chariot actual uh, finding of the chariot uh, it's to the scale uh, nothing is uh, model this is not a model this is the original chariot in actual size so every small small component you can see in this photograph of a reconstruction uh, this is a, a reconstruction of the burial system you can see uh, the dead body and how they uh, compose or putting though all those uh, offering uh, a many component like furniture pots bow and arrow a shield and uh, 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 the chariot uh, in the grave so this is the structure of chariot you can see this is the drawing of the chariot this is frontal view this is rear view this is the top view of the chariot so see the wheel and the system of chariot the designing and also uh, the pole for uh, the possibly for the flag etc and see uh, the pole and uh, uh, the actual pole like this having the copper inlay in all uh, all around so this is the actual structure of the chariot uh, if you compare with the other chariot of the world the mesopotamian chariot in uh, around 3000 bce having four wheel chariot uh, this is not two wheel chariot later on in the egyptian chariot of uh, 18th century bce or 17th century bce having the spoke wheel chariot and then a lightweight uh, lightweight uh, uh, dashboard etc uh, and then a roman chariot in 4000 uh, 400 bce the similar type of chariot we have uh, in the continuity in the historical period in india also uh, but uh, Mesopotamian chariot, mind it, the Mesopotamian chariot having four wheel, the solid wheel of four, four wheel. But in the same time, uh, in Indian subcontinent, Harappan culture uh, having two wheel chariot. So we have more advanced than the contemporary world of, of uh, uh, entire civilization so the invention of two wheel chariot to the spoke wheel uh, the transformation to the car to the chariot is very easy in indian subcontinent so that's a very very important point and another point uh, the plain ground uh, like the settlement of ganga yamna doa uh, is uh, uh, very very convenient to uh, uh, create a chariot and also run the chariot at this ground so this area possibly given a uh, very good opportunity for the craftsmen and uh, the uh, uh, contemporary skilled people to develop the chariot uh, and convert uh, the cart into the war chariot See, if you see the in contemporary world, this is the Egyptian uh, chariot, one of the depiction of that. The similar whip you can see here, it's uh, uh, at Sonoli also. This is the spoke wheel because it's a late, uh, at least uh, 100 or 200 year late uh, uh, chariot, but in India, we got chariot at least in 2002, 1900 BCE uh, in this grave. So that's a very, very important vital point. Uh, we also got uh, this uh, bow uh, and uh, bow and arrow in the excavation, the chariot in the excavation, whip in the excavation. So that's a, a, 
giving us a very good idea about the society and uh, uh, the reconstruction of for the uh, cultural uh, past uh, of contemporary society if we can say uh, how the evolved chariot uh, from the cart so this is the some of the drawing from the kalibanga excavation of harappan site having uh, the chariot of solid wheel having the different kind of design and also having the design of the spoke the uh, broader spoke and also the smaller or uh, spoke in uh, a small interval that's development you can see in the cart frame also so this is the bulky cart cart frame but the smaller cart frame is like this uh, this is pan like cart cart frame so this shows that uh, we are in the process of uh, the harappans is also having the process of development or uh, uh, they have also a very very innovative idea to convert uh, the heavy uh, cart to lightweight cart or possibly the chariot also in sanoli we got the solid wheel uh, chariot which shows the contemporary development of the chariot itself uh, and conversion into the cart to the war chariot so that's a, a very very important point another you see the uh, shield the eight shaped shield uh, this is uh, the copper uh, inlay design uh, criss cross design having the copper inlays at uh, entire top and uh, this also a very very good example of intricate carving of inlay of estetite uh, these are the rounded estetite uh, inlays as well as uh, the rectangular uh, shape they composed all those things are very very meticulously in geometrical pattern uh, uh, like that so this is the very very interesting uh, development technological advancement if you see in the back back is also having the small small wood uh, strips tied with Uh, copper nails tiny nails uh, see possibly uh, these are the earliest example of helmet this is very late this is the late example of uh, uh, bus the indian helmet many uh, discovered if you see the weapons the great indian warriors having a very innovative idea to create the weapons the both side uh, uh, sword uh, or a double sided x and then sword hooked uh, sword uh, the harpoon and uh, anthropomorphic figure etc the variety of weapons they have uh, the uh, in the similar culture particularly in the ganga yamuna dwap we got many hundreds of finding of many of the places this is the uh, if you see uh, the reconstruction uh, this is the uh, reconstruction at the back this is the original chariot you can see the human being also uh, the visibility at the high uh, and uh, see how to tie with the horse so there is a lot of question arises that whether uh, this is horse chariot whether it's a bull drawn chariot or whether uh, any other animal uh, tied with this uh, uh, chariot so it's a really very very interesting uh, topic or very very interesting question for understanding uh, the chariot statistic of the chariot and uh, uh, the technology of the chariot see uh, one two three things is very very important for the understanding one thing uh, the size of the chariot it's a very very small chariot uh, one person can uh, ride on that uh, or maximum two person can uh, ride in this chariot 
and then height of the wheel is almost 60 to 65 centimeter that's a very small high, uh, height and then a uh, pole pole is very long and slick the yoke is very very small uh, uh, this pole and yoke you cannot put at the shoulder of the animal in case of the bull chariot uh, it need to put the yoke on the shoulder if you put the yoke on the shoulder this chariot is uh, just down downwards at the back so this will touch uh, uh, here in the back so the army or the man driving on that uh, it's a uh, difficult to uh, stay of, uh, at this chariot itself so it's not possible to put uh, this pole and yoke on the shoulder of the uh, any of the animal second thing yoke is very very small the bull chariot or bull uh, cart uh, needs a longer yoke as well as heavier yoke to put uh, on the shoulder of uh, the animal uh, so uh, this yoke is very small to only segregate the two horse uh, with each other so that's another important point uh, the horse height of the horse and uh, you need a little uh, gap with the uh, dashboard to the horse uh, so so that is the reason this pole is so long this is not a short port, uh, pole like a, a, a bull chariot heavy and d-shaped chassis d-shaped chassis is also very important for understanding because this chassis is uh, attached with the uh, central hub or uh, 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 for attachment of two wheel so the entire dashboard at the frontal dashboard stay on that and they give the support for the d-shaped chassis in other hand in the cart there is no need to have the this type of chassis the similar chassis you can see in the Egyptian chariot, in the Mesopotamian chariot, or uh, a, a Masononian and other culture also. That even in the contemporary, even in the later culture. So this very very clearly shows this is the war chariot. This is not a simple uh, cart or not a simple chariot for the procession. So. And another important thing, the association of the all warfare materials like shield, like bow and arrow, like antenna sword, uh, uh, and uh, blade sword, uh, even with the women uh, warriors or women burial, uh, we got and symbolic antenna sword also we got in the excavation. So that entire composition or in circumstances uh, circumstantial evidence as well as uh, uh, contextual evidence also shows that some of the people or some of the grave is related to uh, the warrior class also of course uh, there is a lot of uh, burials 116 burial earlier and 10 burial in this time uh, may not be uh, all related to the warrior class it's a general class also but yes some of the grave uh, certainly related with the warrior class that's a, another uh, very very interesting uh, 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 proposition of uh, this excavation if we can see the Indian literature and uh, we can uh, uh, see the Indian literature or we, we try to understand the Indian culture in Indian literature from uh, Vedic time. There is a lot of references of uh, warfare in the Vedas also, in the later Vedic text also there is uh, references of uh, uh, warfare as well as Veda itself 
having very good description, vivid description of chariot, cart, and uh, 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 that is there in the Vedas also. And uh, later Vedic tradition, like uh, uh, the Ramayana, also having reference of chariot, the Mahabharata. Uh, basically, uh, the various chariot uh, uh, referred in uh, Mahabharat uh, itself. So we have a long tradition of a war chariot. So yes, the technology evolved uh, in this land. Uh, of Indian uh, subcontinent itself. So this is the discovery of uh, for understanding uh, of uh, technological advancement, uh, uh, particularly craft advancement, uh, the technological advancement, the mobility of the chariot, the balance of the chariot. Uh, so just uh, yes, the lot of things uh, is uh, involved in this uh, discovery for understanding of our uh, rich uh, past, uh, rich culture. Mm, uh, so uh, this is, uh, if you see the intricate carving, we got this uh, design in the CT scan. So what we, we have done for understanding, we have done uh, the CT scan, of some of the object, we have done uh, the X-ray te technique, uh, the same X-ray, uh, even in the baggage X-ray, we try to do for understanding of uh, technological uh, perspective, uh, etc., design, shape, uh, and also we have done the GPR survey for understanding whether these area also having uh, uh, the uh, potentiality to do the excavation in the future. Yes, we have several, several uh, other indications uh, in the nearby uh, field uh, that may have the similar kind of uh, burial in the nearby field also. Uh, apart from that, we have done the photogrammetry, we have done the 3D scanning, uh, and uh, not only that, the DNA analysis and uh, the all chemical analysis and uh, dating with the modern technique like AMS and C14 dates, etc. We try to do uh, at the excavation for better understanding or, and reconstruction of the past culture or contemporary culture uh, at the Sanoli or Upper Ganga Yamna Doab as well as the contemporary culture in Indus Valley civilization or Saraswati uh, Valley uh, civilization or culture. Uh, the several site, Harappan site has discovered and excavated also. So we try to understand and the contemporary culture, the regional variations, uh, uh, of Harappan as well as the other culture emerges in uh, the Upper Ganga Yamna Dwar. So I'm thankful for uh, to organizers uh, uh, to giving me the opportunity to discuss this topic uh, in short because time is very short. Uh, so uh, we have to discuss and uh, uh, the questions uh, uh, for the students and others also. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. It's nice. It's very nice. So we will start the question answer. If someone have any query or any question, any doubt or confusion, uh, they can ask to Dr. Manjul. If you want to ask any question, you just turn on your mic and ask. Okay, Dr. Sir, we got some question on our YouTube channel. I just read it out. One question okay. is, recently multigrain food balls, laddus have been found in excavation somewhere in Rajasthan. Is it true? Please state its significance. Is that yes, true? yes. 
uh, it's a true uh, yes we have published uh, one article in the journal of sciences uh, very recently uh, earlier i have uh, done excavation at binjor uh, binjor is uh, located in uh, uh, ganganagar uh, that is very close to uh, pakistan border and uh, rebuilt it uh, from uh, 5000 bce to second millennium bce the harappan culture in that uh, yes uh, the football uh, seven uh, uh, food balls like mud lump we got there and that lump having the multi grains so that's the first evidence your evidence having uh, possibly the ritual practice at the site itself so in the uh, that site is just close to the dry bed of saraswati so that's a uh, and also the relative finding also suggests that this is the place where some rituals performed by the uh, uh, that uh, contemporary people so that's a very very important and one thing uh, if you see that football uh, having one uh, stereotype seen of a typical harappan and also two bull figurine in front of that and one dish on stand uh, possibly having some uh, uh, bones pieces of bones of cattle and uh, just behind that one upsidal platform having the whitish clay at the top that is also there so that very very clear, clear indication that this place is uh, uh, possibly related with uh, some rituals okay sir one more question is there is related to this sinoli excavation uh, do you find any relevance with any war of that time do you find there the warriors burials are there so is there any relevance of the war or do you find it, any evidence of the war actually it's a uh, uh, very difficult uh, to relate with any of the war uh, uh, happened uh, whether in the contemporary time or not or uh, whether these people uh, or this clan is also related with the uh, war of later on or in the earlier uh, we do not say the pin point but yes some of the indications are uh, uh, is there in uh, uh, the burial itself some of the burial having symbolic burial the some bone containing uh, at this burial some of the burial is there is no human bone is available only some belongings uh, they put inside that may indicate some that that uh, that particular uh, uh, people or part particular man has uh, not uh, dead body is not uh, uh, find out or that is not uh, there so they only perform uh, some symbolic burials at at that point of time so uh, and also uh, the all component which is uh necessary for the warfare that is there in the grave so that also indicate that they may involve or they might involve uh in some of the warfare uh dr uh, excuse me sir yeah please, please. yes yes uh, sir please tell what what sir please explain about the secret chamber found okay secret chamber is, is a structure underground structure in fact underground half underground possibly half uh, portion is at the top so this is very very secret, secret place the central portion having uh, space for putting uh, one coffin uh, shape or one coffin uh, of uh, at the middle and uh, the gateway is from possibly is the ramp part ramp from southern side so this may and and some burning evidence also we got in the uh, central part some uh, pieces of pottery and uh, all around the inside some uh, uh, small platforms all around 
uh, over there. So that's very important. Maybe that that is uh, having for uh, some people can stand there, the priest, etc., and uh, uh, some rituals perform uh, in the last ritual performed at uh, that uh, secret chamber. Okay, sir. Uh, sir. Uh -oh. Hi. Sir, I just have this query about the women warriors. So does it uh, uh, sort of different, uh, uh, raise the participation of women in the culture at a different level from what has been uh, read in the epics or uh, heard about or uh, inferred earlier from the excavations? There are several references uh, okay. in the text also uh, about the women warriors. Uh, what uh, we have done, I'm not trying to relate uh, uh, the text at least at this uh, moment, but yes, if you see uh, the burial related with the women also having uh, the weapons like blade sword, blade sword means a very thin sword uh, with the hilt. Uh, this is a lightweight sword in fact. And some symbolic antenna sword is also found in uh, that burial. So that, uh, and also bow and arrow. So that clearly shows that the women also involved in uh, the warfare. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Manjul, I have a question. Yes, yes, please. Uh, this R1A1 gene is uh, mentioned widely in archaeology as an indicator of the Aryan migration theory into India. And it is said that uh, a lot of people in the northern part of India have this R1A1 gene, whereas many uh, people in the south don't have this. So, what, uh, do you have anything to comment on this? Actually, it's a really very debatable question. Uh, the R1A1 and uh, the so-called Aryan uh, gene or so-called Aryan DNA. At this moment, particularly neither in the Harappan site or nor in the uh, this Sonoli site having that DNA. So we do not have the ancient DNA related with the R1A1 or uh, that. So that's so-called that DNA. Uh, I'm not uh, going into the detail of that, but uh, the DNA particularly in this region shows the indigenous uh, people. Uh, so actually, uh, if you discuss with the uh, DNA uh, part, particularly R1, A1, this is a particular, a very, very small part of that. So I don't know uh, the experts uh, will give the uh, more detail on the DNA study. Uh, so uh, that, that is not my domain, in fact. But as far as the cultural interpretation is uh, concerned about the DNA, whatever we got, uh, that's an indigenous uh, development of culture, either in the Harappan or in the Sanoli. So we have the indigenous uh, people at that time. And uh, have any chariots of this antiquity been found in the southern part of India? Uh, are you aware of any such finds? And if yes, not, yes. what is the significance? Of yes, there is, there, this in North actually there, there is a horse bone and uh, the skeleton of horse and uh, uh, that is found in the uh, South India also, but it's a little late, late finding. This is not a contemporary with the this, these finds. Horse bone is also reported in many sites uh, of uh, Harappans also in the Ganga Valley like Koldiva. Uh, reported uh, some of the horse bone and then Kalibanga is also reported one uh, tooth and uh, also uh, Surkotra reported uh, some horse bone. So it's a really a debatable point, uh, no doubt, particularly in uh, before 2000 BCE, but yes, in the late phase of Harappan uh, of around uh, 2000 BCE, there is some indications uh, of horse bone also. 
we got the aqueous bone in binjor excavation also uh, at least six species uh, six individuals but now we are in the process to do the dna of horse bone for un better understanding uh, whether uh, uh, um, the uh, indigenous uh, horse were there or horse from uh, as uh, speculated that the horse coming from the uh, that uh, another area uh, 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 from india so we have also some indigenous species of horse a uh, variety of horse in uh, uh, manipur and kathiawari horse and other horse also almost five six variety we have in uh, indigenous variety of horse also so we have to work a uh, hard uh, for a better understanding of ancient uh, bones or ancient bones of horse so we try to do the particular dna of uh, that horse Uh, because it's a very very uh, close uh, uh, kind of structure of uh, or anatomy of a horse as well as the wild horse and also the asses so it's a really a very difficult task sometime uh, to reconstruct with a smaller amount of the bone so yes we are uh, we have to do a hard work with the scientist thank you uh doctor sir there is one more question there is on a youtube uh the question yeah it says what is the cultural significance of color used in primitive style pottery developed in early ages pardon yeah color is, what is the color significance in the pottery in developed in a primitive style in early ages okay uh the color uh achieved particularly in the pottery one is the simple color which is red ware in the open kiln firing uh, and all that but achieving the another uh, color like gray color etc that needs need another technological advancement but they ask whether they uh, try to understand the painting over it because there is several style of painting like uh, painted in uh, red ware the painted in gray ware also the painting on other uh, style also the painting all it's a really signify uh, too much of uh, technological advancement and understanding uh, if you see the harappan pottery harappan pottery having the various design either in the geometrical design also some floral and faunal design also uh, some of the pottery having the entire landscape uh the different type of trees like people tree and other trees also the uh, enclosure bara and also some animal the small animals also the peacock so that also signify the contemporary uh, environment contemporary trees and herbs uh, etc so it's a really really very good uh, area of study for understanding of the environment the technological part uh, as so there is one question can i ask one question yes sir yes please. yeah uh, with the excavations at fatehpur sikri by dr dv sharma ji and dr shinde at uh, at rakigadi and your excavations uh, at uh, sinoli now what could be the i mean uh, age of the indus valley civilization we also know that now saraswati river has been <clears throat> traced with the remote sensing now the western historians they have put uh, 5000 years around 5000 years now mahabharata uh, is now not a mythology it's a reality okay so what should be the according to you what should be the age of the indus valley civilization or indian civilization you have asked a multiple question in one question uh, in fact uh, uh, the excavation at fatehpur sikri having the very late uh, discovery or very late culture uh, uh, as uh, uh, understanding of indus valley civilization or understanding of uh, sanoli excavation of upper ganga yamuna dwap civilization like ocp copper boat culture 
so uh, your next question is uh, uh, the age of the harappan so uh, in particularly saraswati valley or in the indus valley or uh, other uh, river valley uh, uh, sites given us lot of dates of uh, indus valley civilization right from uh, 5000 bce to uh, second millennium bce or 1900 bce uh, a normal phenomena we can also uh, divide this the entire time span in the early harappan phase or pre harappan phase also uh, the birana got uh, 6000 or 7000 bce Uh, and then Meherar also having the 7000, 6000 BCE. So that the pre-Harappan phase, then early Harappan phase, and then Bachar Harappan phase from uh, 2600 uh, around to second millennium BCE, and then uh, 1900 onward, there is some decline phase of Harappan civilization. So this is the broad uh, timeline of uh, that. Uh, culture harappan culture as well as uh, uh, as well as far as the sanoli is concerned uh, the uh, time period is around uh, uh, 2100 bce to uh, around 1900 or uh, 1850 or 1900 bce so that's a, a time bracket broad time bracket but it doesn't mean that uh, the upper ganga yamuna dwap there is no earlier uh, uh, sites uh, available so there is a uh, dates uh, another date uh, some of the dates of uh, uh, 2500 and 2600 a date uh, of copper road ocp were also uh, reported of some of the site thank you Excuse me, so I have a question. Yeah, please ask. So, can you tell something more about uh, Fayan spots? Okay, that's a actually primitive uh, type of technology of glass. So, this is actually a chalk-like uh, or we can say the talc-like uh, uh, substance. and uh, for the heating technique they converted into the harder one so that's a, a, a fiance and uh, if you in the later on technological advancement uh, that fiance converted in the glass itself thank you sir okay sir uh, one more question is there uh, it is in a youtube channel do you find any relationship between the chariot used in vedic period that is between 1500 bc to 1000 bc and epic period in described by the ramayana and the mahabharata mm. is there any relationship <laughs> <laughs> uh, the question uh, of vedic period uh, defining the vedic period around uh, 1500 bc to 1000 bc and then defining the ramayana period is absolutely uh, a vague question the vedic is not confined to that particular period uh, if you see the many of the researches have been done by many of the scholars relating the vedic culture with harappans vedic culture so it's a broadly if you understand Uh, that uh, the vedic culture prevailing in the uh, uh, at least 3000 bce 4000 bce in the material culture itself uh, the belief and then other town planning or uses of the pot or many thing can be uh, relate with the vedic uh, uh, description of rigveda and other uh, vedic texts also so as such the culture clearly denote that uh, the chariot is available here that's not uh, in the late phase so that chariot invention of the chariot continued uh, in the uh, early historic period and the historical period itself so actually confining the uh, vedic is the uh, uh, not Ex, uh, accepted by 
uh, scholars in nowadays because we have done lot of work in indian culture and understanding of indian culture with the vedic text as well as the later uh, uh, vedic text also uh, as far as the mahabharata is concerned as uh, the mention the date of the mahabharata it's a really debatable uh, question for the date of mahabharata the uh, uh, astronomical uh, data are saying some uh, another point of view and also archaeological data astronomical data and also but yes it's a very very clear ke the uh, the description vivid description in the mahabharata that's not a friction but all those material culture is available with us around 2000 bc even before in the form so that's the important point so one question i would like to ask the burial places where the coffins are ca uh, kept yeah. were they used any brick etc or it's a mud uh, yeah. how how do the bury those uh, uh, dead bodies okay uh, uh, the burial process uh, you try to understand the burial process uh, once they created a pit around uh, one meter depth or uh, more than that even sometime more than that and then that that pit is uh, created a platform uh, from the finer clay they put finer clay at uh, to to create uh, the base of that and they put uh, everything all belongings uh, and dead body in the coffin cot like coffin uh, at the center and all belongings furniture etc in uh, in the grave after that they put the uh, mud okay and then close the uh, pit possibly at the top they created some uh, tumuli or some type of some structure at the top which is not available at this moment uh, because of the regular use of the land for the cultivation and also uh, the top soil has already been removed by uh, the villagers or for the cultivation uh the sugar cane cultivation is prevailing at this moment is so large in that area okay anyone we want to any question okay so yeah so is the sinoli is not developed as a tourist place are you not doing to develop it as a tourist place sinoli actually yes yes uh, uh ASI has uh, protected the site now and we are in the uh, process of acquisition of land and then after that because all this burial is uh, below the ground so sometimes it's a very very difficult to preserve the below the ground and you see uh, the whole reason uh, is flood zone but it a uh, grave is below the ground okay. so it is sometimes very difficult to preserve in situ at the ground itself so we are in the process of uh, uh, acquisition of land we have already protected the site entire site declared as a centrally protected site or monument so uh, si has already uh, tried to develop uh, that site yes sir I, I, I think this time uh, everything is clear. Yeah. There was some. Ah uh, yes yes. Uh, some. Uh, I think network problem. Network problem. Yes, sir. The thing is that the question is like that. What kind of changes we can see in history after the discovery of chariot at Sinoli? <laughs> we have uh, i have already explained a lot about uh, the uh, first and solitary example uh, 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 reported in the upper ganga yamuna dwab or ganga valley in uh, particularly uh, before 2000 bce or around 2000 bce so that's a very very important task to understand the uh, 
the whole scenario of uh, subcontinent or indian land or indian culture in different zone so this discovery also uh, given us a benchmark for understanding the excavation process the use of uh, multiple technique use of different sciences uh, with archaeological finding or archaeological excavation for understanding in holistic approach of our culture our past our lifestyle so uh, and also to relate our uh, ancient text which is used to uh, uh, say that it's a friction it's a story so this is the uh, actual benchmark for understanding of many things many things yeah so it's very nice sir you are with us we got a a new face new domain of the science with the archaeology here i think audience enjoyed it we learned a lot from you so this is a very nice talk we will definitely jaisa hum hindi mein bolte bhi hain ki hum apne itihas ko jaan ke apne bhavishya ki buniyad ko acha bana sakte hain so definitely if we find out the chariots the oldest chariots of the world there in asinoli so definitely we all indian very very proud hame bahut garv bhi mehsoos hoga और हम सब देखेंगे भी हम सब जानेंगे भी हमारे इतिहास में साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी हमारे इंजीनियर्स हमारे वैज्ञानिक साइंटिस्ट कितने एडवांस थे और उसको देख के भी हमें अच्छा लगेगा और डेफिनेटली म्यूजियम में भी अच्छा करने की सोचेंगे तो आपने इन सब चीज़ों पे बहुत प्रकाश डाला सुंदर तरीके से बताया ऑडियंस ने भी बहुत इंजॉय किया इवन हमने टाइम लिमिट लगी थी वन आवर उसको भी हम क्रॉस कर गए तो सर ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ नेशनल साइंस सेंटर आई थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर दिस नाइस टॉक एंड वी लाइक टू एसोशिएट विद यू in future also to basically find out and link the archaeology with the science and we will deliver the lecture and same kind of talk to the layman also general public ke liye bhi aise kaam karte rahenge aapka hamare sath rehne ke liye bahut bahut dhanyawad audience ka bhi humko itna pyar mila youtube pe bhi kai log yahan pe dekh rahe the aur google meet pe bhi kuch log jude hamare sath mein aapka bhi hamare sath yahan pe rehne ke liye bahut bahut dhanyawad thank you very much all thank you thank you thank you, thank you, thank you very much sir. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.